Well, you're outdated garbage. You don't make 18 horsepower. My bigger piston says I do. Well, that's just your bigger piston. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of my parts will fit you. Actually, that's the point of this video, is we're going to go through all your parts, and we're going to match them up with my parts, and I hate to say it, but some of my parts might actually be better. Crap. <laughs> you don't make 18 horsepower. Okay, you don't make 18 horsepower. Yep. Well, on there, it just says 18 horsepower. I know. It's the whole people are stupid. We're having an argument like the internet. Oh. Okay. Today's goal is to both piss off and make the internet happy. We have a Duramax 440 that we recently broke down all the way to block in a video. This was me and Jesse. And then we have a GX340, which is basically the exact same thing as a GX390 that John broke down in a video in order to teach people how to do it. Now, we've got both of them and all of their parts sitting on a table so that we can play comparisons back and forth. There's a few things that right off the bat, without question, do interchange. Your cranks are both exactly the same. The flywheel tapers, the depth of the flywheel, flywheel nuts, all of that exactly the same. Your balancers are both exactly the same weight, exactly the same unit, basically. There's a minor little bit of a difference between the two of them, but not much of a difference. On these, it's not quite a good comparison, because this is actually a tapered shaft one that we're going to be putting that on. But it's nine pounds, three plus ounces. And this is nine pounds, 1.9 ounces. And with that being said, in racing, lighter is better. We're going to be marking each of these parts as we work through them as to which one is the lighter of the parts in order to potentially build the ultimate mongrel between the two of them. The carburetors. Oh, the arguments you will have over carburetors on the internet. Here's the real proof in the pudding. If you mic out the inside of this carburetor and you mic out the inside of a genuine Honda carburetor, the Duramax carburetor is about two millimeters thicker through it. So the Duramax flows more air. This is the reason why a stock Duramax carburetor has the equivalent of a Stage 1 GX390 main jet. They both run the same idles, the idle jet on both of them stock is exactly the same, but the moment you try to increase horsepower on a Duramax 440, you have to increase the idle jet on the carburetor. But otherwise than that, it's just a regular carburetor. Nothing special other than bigger is better. Well, that's pretty clear. Okay, so obviously the bore in each of the blocks is different, but there's continuous arguments about whether if you were to bore out the GX to be as big a bore as the Duramax, would you actually save weight or should you just outright buy the Duramax? The connecting rod is exactly the same stroke, the crank is exactly the same stroke. The duration on the cam is exactly the same. So the real question becomes the weight of the block. The Duramax obviously has reinforcement pieces that have been added, but 
is there really that much of a difference? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna split these out and I'm gonna set the Duramax block on, we're gonna set this block on, then we're gonna set the side covers on and we're gonna see which combination is actually the lightest. So Duramax block is 12 pounds, nine ounces with a ginormous bore like literally we can just hide the GX piston inside of it. So 12 pounds, nine ounces versus 14 pounds, seven ounces. This thing is two pounds heavier and a smaller piston size. Okay, now the next thing is, which one of these is lighter? because they're exactly the same bolt pattern. They line up perfectly, exact same bearing sizes in everything. So if one of these is lighter, we should probably run the lighter one. So the Duramax is three pounds, 9.5 ounces. The GX is four pounds, 21 ounces. That puts the combination of this side cover and this engine without being bored out. Now, granted, we're going to lose some weight if you bore it out. Without being bored out, almost three pounds difference than this combo that already has a bigger piston in it. We already talked about the fact that the cams are the exact same duration and everything, but if you look at them, the Duramax one is way thinner, and this ends up showing up in weight big time. We've got one pound, 14 ounces. This thing's borderline two pounds. The Duramax one is one pound, nine ounces. Therefore, that Duramax could potentially be a cheater stock cam. They both, from the outside, look very very similar with the one issue of this has a dimple and this actually has a hole drilled all the way through it but quickly looking at them they're pretty stockish looking now the big argument about all duramax versus hondas is the pistons hondas are 81 82 millimeter. Now, comparing a bigger piston versus a smaller piston in weight is kind of stupid, but these are 11.2. These have an entirely different design on them, and they are 91, 91.3 millimeter. Almost an entire centimeter bigger. Putting them at 11.9 ounces. Now, wait a minute. There's a curiosity for you. 11.9. I'm wondering if this is so much more hollowed out because of the fact it's using a rod that is exactly the same size. So while we're on that, let's compare rods. I'm not going to bother running the caliper on these. We've already done it. They're exactly the same. So if we take this which is the GX one. And of course, because we're filming, it doesn't want to go in. So if we take the GX and we put it on there, and then we take the Duramax, which is better, that has bearings in it. And a lot of people are arguing about whether these are clones of an ARC bearing. They're a different size. The oiling port is different and the location for the bearing tab is different. 
These are not replaceable with ARC bearings. So we throw that on there. And then to top it off, we take an ARC rod right here, which clearly states Honda 4.41. For its length and we stick that on there uh, John can you shoot down through that to see how well they line up pretty darn close here I'll rotate it so we can see through the ARC side let me right there there you go all right, go ahead and pull back. So here we go. ARC, Duramax, GX. Now, remember, the game is lighter is better. So here's the Duramax top, three point zero here's the gx 2.3 so the gx1 wins the gx is better as far as weight goes if you were racing so this is what will be going into my next duramax build now let's go rods we have 9.7 Duramax 9.8 and this must be really close on the 9.8 because John and I have remeasured this several times and it seems to float between 9.8 and 9.7 and this is the ARC equivalent racing rod at guess what 9.7 So the GX is a little bit lighter, but the real reality is I would rather run this, which looks way better and has bearings in it, than any GX rod. Let's powwow about a few things that don't exactly interchange. Air filters. The Duramax air filter is gargantuan and dwarfs the Honda filter as does the intake on it. Now, they're the same exact height, and you can take a Duramax filter and fit it in a GX box. So that's nice. Now, the next argument across the internet, and I have figured out it depends on the generation of Duramax. There's a Duramax 440 where... The intake width and the exhaust width are a little bit different. But this one's a newer one. So if we take off this exhaust piece off this Duramax head, and then if we take off the exhaust piece off this GX, and we manage to fumble around, that fits there. And this one fits right there. Now we're going to get into double checking the heads in just a sec because there's a lot of arguments about whether the Duramax does or does not have bigger ports and we're going to check that in a second. But one of the things also is the Duramax airbox has a ginormous flow area through it. It's essentially entirely hollow. Whereas the GX airbox has a tiny inlet and it slopes and swoops everything around all over the place. So if you wanted to cheater stock your GX, could you just stick a Duramax box on it? And the answer to that question, which apparently I am going to fumble while I'm here on video, 
is yes. If you wanted a cheater stock, a GX, you could put a Duramax box on it that has a bigger filter. Looks like it's a Honda box, but it's not with an open flow inside area. Now, another argument that I see often, and I wondered where this was coming from, was people saying that the pull start from the Duramax pull start and the Honda pull start are different. And they are kind of. This cup here is different than this cup. They got the same number of holes. They're the same exact diameter. But the holes are at different heights. Remember earlier, we talked about how the flywheels are absolutely, totally perfect, down to only like a little bit of an ounce, uh, I think like 0.1 ounce difference, we'll double check. The difference is these pull starts. One of them is a little bit taller than the other on where the holes are located. And that's why the internet is convinced that a Duramax pull start and a Honda pull start won't work on each other. So, we've got the Honda flywheel here. This is the Duramax right here. And that drops right on. And it's happy. Out of curiosity, it weighs 7 ounces. And this is your general stock Honda. And it weighs 7 ounces. Well, 7.5 versus 7. Duramax wins again on the lightness award. So we've got lighter cam, lighter flywheel cover, airbox. I wonder what the chances are the airbox is lighter too. It feels lighter. More open, 8.3. Oh, there we go. So, that one is lighter by almost an entire ounce. So there we go. There's one aspect where the Duramax doesn't win in the light category, but the Duramax does probably win in the flow category. I don't know. Somebody needs to flow bench this versus the GX. Just for the cheater stock, guys. We all know you guys exist. Don't argue about it. All right, let's check the flywheels while we're here. We've got Honda flywheel. Thirteen pounds, ten ounces. And I'll flip it over and compare the magnets in just a sec. Thirteen pounds, one point eight ounce. Duramax wins again on the lighter category. That might explain a few things in the mini bike world. So there we go. They both look exactly the same. These holes here line up exactly the same. These line up exactly the same. Taper exactly the same. And magnets are basically the same. And so are keyways, obviously, at this point. Internet argument number 322. Could you use a GX head on a Duramax in order to make a high compression head on the cheap? The answer is... Yes, it'll bolt right up. Answer solved. GX size gasket. Duramax size gasket. Well, we're on this right now. NRRacing.com, who does not sponsor me, but I totally shout out to them anytime I can. 
they make the correct gasket to be able to go on these. So now let's talk about the heads. We've got some big time differences in the top part of the heads. Where the rocker standoffs are, are basically exactly the same. They're exactly same sizes, same thread, same everything. But what's different is the valve caps. One has the clips, the other one has the cap that locks in. This one has that stupid thing that always runs away from you. And the other thing is, yet again, the weight of these. Now this has a bigger chamber and is four pounds, 13.8 ounces. This has the smaller chamber at four pounds, 13.8 ounces. So if you trade back and forth between the two of these, you literally have no gain in weight. The only thing you're gaining is what the different heads are capable of. Whether you like this style or whether you prefer this style. The other question that comes up often is the exhaust port. If we measure out the Honda, we're at 26.5. If we measure out the Duramax, We're at 27.9, almost 28 millimeters. If we flip it and we do the same thing on the intake, on the Honda, we're at 31.6. On the Duramax, we're at 32.4. Now, if we rotate these around, so we've got exhaust on that side, intake on this side. Exhaust, intake. We'll do exhaust first. If we can find an angle here that works for us, which unfortunately is not an easy thing to do with this style of head. But we're at 32.3 versus, oh yeah, that's definitely smaller, 30.4. So we're going to do intake at 34.6. 7 or so versus 35.1. So not a big giant aspect as far as the intake is concerned. Exhaust is definitely much bigger. Now, I'm not going to bother to break the head down as far as checking the thickness on these is concerned because if you were getting to that point, you would break them down and check them. But there's a bunch of confirmation that these should be thinner than these are. So you may have to order custom valves if you intend to increase on these heads. Ha <laughs> ha, my wrist pin is better than yours. Yeah, problem is that little wrist pin is about the only thing better than mine. Well, let's be serious here. Weight-wise, all the parts in the Duramax, other than the intake by one ounce, the wrist pin that the GX1, otherwise than that, the Duramax has more horsepower, more CCs, a better connecting rod, side cover is the same reinforcements as the GX, the block has reinforcements that the GX doesn't. You would have to spend tons to machine this out to have the same piston size and same horsepower capability as the Duramax. Crank-wise, 
I have to admit, nothing towards Duramax, but long-term trust versus new guy on the block. Crank-wise, the cranks are exactly the same weight. And I would run a Honda crank before I'd run the Duramax crank if I was really trying to go for it. Part of that is that the Honda crank is much more finished. It's more refined, even though it does weigh exactly the same weight. The refinement in the two cranks is the only reason why it is I probably would choose the Honda. But in the build we're doing on the Sears Dragster, we're going to run the Duramax one, and we're cranking trying to hit 9,000 RPMs just to see what it does. Head-wise, I like the setup of the Duramax head better. It's bigger valves, bigger ports, bigger everything. But if I wanted to make a high compression Duramax, I'd be better off with the Honda head. There are certain aspects where higher compression would be a better idea. And for a few bucks, you could easily port and polish, go back and forth, and be able to have the same exact valves in the Honda head that are stock in the Duramax. Full cheater stock, stock parts, the best build on the table would break down as Duramax block, Duramax side cover, Duramax piston and rod, GX wrist pin, a GX crank, just because, long-term trust, the Duramax head, without question, is going to flow more. I would go with that. The Duramax cam is lighter, which means it's going to be faster. Duramax flywheel, and otherwise than that, send it to the moon, right? Sure. That's what you do. You send everything to the moon, and you don't care about that RPM sensor, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is why we have throttles with limiters on everything you drive. Alright guys, thanks for following, thanks for subscribing, and I hope this helped you. Say bye bye! Bye bye! You know, you would think after all these videos I wouldn't have to tell you to do that. <laughs> bye bye! Bye bye!